Okay, now, today I want to talk a little bit about sort of a part of the brain area that I find very cool because I hung around in a very long time in a lab uh, that really studied these kinds of brain areas because that lab was very interested in dopamine. I did my, my bachelor's thesis there and I did master's work there, so I, I, I have this, these areas have a special place in my heart. And what I'm talking about is the basal ganglia. Now, I can't show you all the basal ganglia, it's, it's a whole network of areas and I kind of have to deal with, with a model here, so I can't show you every single structure. But if you were to look at it, so here we have again, brainstem, pons, medulla, we have the cerebellum, it's not brainstem, but like cerebellum. And then here you have the insula. Now, if you, I actually took this whole thing apart, I wonder if I can sort of quickly, quickly sort of, sort of more or less kind of put this back together. Okay, so here you have <laughs> quickly assembled brain, okay? Now, if I were to peel apart this part of the of the cortex, okay, and I'm just taking off the cerebellum, this kind of fits in here. You see that? That fits in here. So this is the insula, which is a separate layer of, of cortex. But to see that, you have to peel away part of the, like the temporal lobe, kind of pull it away. Okay, insula. Now, under that is basal ganglia. Here you have a pretty nice view of a part of the basal ganglia. Now, this is the striatum, okay, the striatum, the corpus striatum, the striped body. And you can see all kinds of fascinating things here, okay, that's, that's why I love this. First of all, functionally, what does this do? Well, it's important for specific motor things, uh, motor programs, motor like, like movement and such. But it's also important for reward processing. So, uh, processing things that you find rewarding to do, and that whole dopamine system is therefore also kind of involved in addiction stuff, right? Okay, now, uh, a little hard to see. Here's another part, but that's, you can't really see that in this model. That would be the nucleus accumbens, uh, which, uh, well, that's another part of the basal ganglia, but again, you can't see it. Very important for addiction behavior, though. Okay, so what do you see here? This red thing, that's basal ganglia. Now, first of all, if you pull this off, right, this is the capsula interna, the internal capsule, okay, which is a, a bunch of fibers, but the basal ganglia fit in there. Now, what do you see? What do you see in the basal ganglia? Well, it's not one brain area, it's several nuclei. So first here, you have the caudate nucleus, which means the tailed nucleus, which kind of makes sense. You have the nucleus of the caudate nucleus, the corpus of the caudate nucleus, the body, and then you have this tail, okay? And then you have fiber tracks there, right? And then you have this thing. So, all together, the corpus striatum, striped body, consisting of the caudate nucleus, and then the caudate nucleus forms a tail around this thing. And that thing is called the butamen. A butamen, that means nutshell, okay? Nutshell, around that, the caudate nucleus. Now the fun thing is, and that's what makes this so complicated, the corpus striatum, the striped body. What do you consider part of that? Because again, that's not one brain structure, that's a set of nuclei. Bear in mind, the brain is very hard to dissect. It's a gelatinous mass. You cannot just, I mean, if you were to open up your brain, right, this would not be nicely, like, red colored. This is embedded in a whole bunch of other fibers, but very easy, and, and not to mention cell body. So it's difficult, difficult to take this out. Okay, so, at some point someone said, okay, corpus striatum, for short, striatum. What's part of that? Well, the caudate nucleus is. Maybe the nucleus accumbens is. Other people say, no, the nucleus accumbens is not. Um, putamen, that's an evergreen. I think you can say, yeah, that's, that's part of the uh, um, striatum. Now, if I take this out, here's what makes this difficult. So you have the corpus striatum, the striped body, but then part of the striped body, the corpus striatum, is the lentiform nucleus. But the lentiform nucleus is uh, basically another set of two nuclei, okay? So if even in the simplest, simplest form you say striatum is caudate nucleus and putamen, 
then you have a problem. Because strictly speaking, the putamen is part of the lentiform nucleus, and that means something like lens, lens-shaped nucleus. What, what is lens-shaped? Well, if I turn, if I take out, sorry, this will take me one sec. If I take out the lentiform nucleus from the other side of this model, okay, this is the lentiform nucleus. So this is just the putamen, right? You see, it's the same structure, right? The putamen, same structure. But then on the other side, is that thing, which you can see is a slightly different color to distinguish the, the two pieces. This is the lentiform nucleus. It is a bit lens-shaped, or in some versions, lentil-shaped. Fine, I don't care. On the, because remember, it was on the brain like this, on the lateral side, on the side of the brain, the lentiform nucleus has the putamen, on the medial side, towards the middle of the brain, it has this, and that's the globus pallidus, the pale globe. So now you have lentiform nucleus, putamen and, um, putamen and globus pallidus, lentiform nucleus, corpus striatum, caudate nucleus, and lentiform nucleus, putamen and globus pallidus. And then some people say, yeah, but the, the nucleus accumbens is also part of that. Right? And then sometimes they include other, other bits and bobs as well. Very confusing. In any case, these lovely things, they have something to do with some motor programs and they have something to do with some reward learning. Highlight them apples. Let's keep it simple and let's say that's it. I hope this was interesting, entertaining and useful. And I'd gladly see you again.